Yeah, so we're into the third test match and the final one of this series. And, um, you know, it's been England's day completely, 332 for four at the end of the day's play. And, uh, you know, really, I think if we had to sum it up in one word or one name, it has to be Zach Crawley. It was completely his day, the way he dominated Pakistan's bowling and lots of opportunities for Pakistan initially and, you know, areas where they could have capitalized. But uh, thereafter, there was that 200 plus, uh, you know, runs partnership. And that's how England pretty much uh, took the day to their credit. I've got Monty Panisar here with me. Monty, uh, thank you once again uh, for joining. It's been a pleasure, you know, hearing from you uh, throughout this series. But, but yeah, I mean, it's been a close fought contest uh, throughout the series that we've seen. But today was a day where you can safely say in the end, England was in the driver's seat. Yeah, well, yeah, thank you for having me on your show, uh, Zainab, and uh, I, I agree with you. Um, I think Pakistan were, again, in a dominant position, and I think throughout this uh, series, well, every test, you get the test match, you get the feeling that Azhar Ali makes good decisions, got Pakistan in a dominant position, and then somehow he got, obviously, Pakistan, well, England got back in the game because, you know, the conditions kind of like, uh, you know, favoured the batsman, wicket got a little bit flatter, you know, when the Pakistan bowlers looked to bowl a bit fuller, it just didn't swing as much, you know. And uh, both uh, Zach and, and Josh Butler found it easy to, to you know, um, play that ball off the front foot and, and actually get their hands going through the line of the ball because they knew that there isn't much movement happening. I mean, um, at uh, 130 for four, Pakistan would think that they're, uh, you know, they, they're in a position to really take things in control. You know, with one more wicket, they would be pretty much into the tail of, uh, of uh, England's lineup. But that was not to be. Of course, there was that partnership. But from a Pakistan perspective, what could they have done differently? Do you think they, they uh, missed the trick somewhere? Well, I think it just shows uh, slightly maybe inexperience Azhar Ali has in his captaincy. You know, he, he doesn't he doesn't really have like um, he like he needs to like sort of have these kind of rehearsals in his mind, thinking, okay, you know, the ball's going to swing. We may take early wickets, but let's say if the ball doesn't swing, you know, what do I do then? You know, do I then you know maybe get someone like with uh, you know Mohammed Abbas get the keeper up, for example, you know, like. Um, do you know the average that Mohamed Bahas has <laughs> when the batsman is in his crease and uh, they get out? He averages like just over 10. And then when they're one yard out of that crease, he averages, I think, about 27, just under 30. A couple of yards out of the crease, he's averaging 80. So I'm not sure if Azali probably knows these stats, but, you know, possibly have the keeper up, you know, and make sure the batsmen are in their crease. Um, then with the likes of, you know, when the wicket's slightly slower, you know, the faster bowlers, they're not, they're not going to get much wicket, you know, the nicks are not going to carry. So how can he get wickets in front of square with the fast bowlers? Maybe have a couple of drive men, you know, have a silly, silly mid on, um, you know, or mid off where they were driving, you know, if we'd line of the ball, have a man there. So when they're driving, they're like, oh, I could maybe just, you know, pop one up you know, create a bit of doubt. So they don't feel so freely about just driving the ball and there's no one there, you know. And I think that's a sort of, you know, captaincy, I think, you know, you know, I think Azarali just needs to think a little bit, think, you know, the ball, slower wicket, can I get the fast bowlers to get wickets in front of square? Mm. If not, how do I do that? And I just don't think he had a game plan for that today. Mm. Um, perhaps uh, looking at the way things went, I mean, you can tell that there's a massive reliance on Yasser Shah uh, because he was he he's supposed to be the one who's to, is supposed to be bowling so many overs. You've got Muhammad Abbas at one end. Um, was there a case of you know a, a fast bowling all rounder that Pakistan could have perhaps tried for uh, this particular game? Now, I think the team is uh, spot on with what they've got. You know, they needed to give uh, forward, you know, Alam a, um, another chance. The poor fellas, you know, 
he's waited over 3,000 days, I think, you know, for his next test match. So, you know, he deserves another chance. And, you know, he, 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 they should, you know, I think Pakistan did the right thing. You know, they said, you know, we've got to give the same team a go. I think it's just about being a little bit creative. It's like I said, it's like, um, what other, you know, how can I then get my attacking bowlers to become slightly more defensive? You know, and I think that's the trouble with this Pakistan team, right? When the wicket's slightly slower, like it was in this match, um, I just don't think Azhar Ali or maybe the coaching staff, you know, they must know, you know, like the Musbah, Mushi, Yunus Khan, they must know, you know, that um, this is how we need to go about, you know, getting these wickets. But I'm just not sure if Azhar Ali, um, when he's, when he's cap captaining this team, um, I, I think it's just like, oh, you know, English conditions, we're going to get wickets behind the stumps, we're going to get the nicks, it's going to swing. And then I'll get Yasser Shah in there. That happened. That worked for the first half of the game. But the second half of the game, it didn't. So then can I now have different game plans? You know, for him mm. to be a good captain, um, he needs to have different game plans in place. Mm. Um, and like I said before, I just don't think he prepared himself for that. I think he kind of expected in England, you just get wickets behind the stumps, you know, behind mm. square, fast bowlers get their wickets. And I just believe that because his pitch was quite slow, um, he he doesn't know how to get wickets in front of in front of square with the with the fast bowlers. That's could the bowlers problem. could the bowlers have tried something different? Yeah, they could. You know, they could have um, just bowled maybe a bit more defensively. Not they should have recognised that if the ball isn't swinging, can I then just bowl? line to line, wicket to wicket and get the ball to seam. You know, that's another skill thing. I think maybe the likes of Yasin Shah and uh, um, Shaina Freedy, both of them, you know, you can see they were just bowling it full, hoping it, 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 it would swing, but it wasn't. So maybe then they go to plan B, right? If it's not going to swing, can I now just bowl line to line, wicket to wicket and get ball to, you know, uh, seam movement? Um, and I think that's, these are the things that they'll probably, you know, sit down and reflect and they'll think, look, we're still a young team. And uh, this is, a, you, you know, you can, you can see that they're still a, a young side because they don't seem to have the, the other options. And when you see the likes of Jimmy Anderson, Stuart Broad coming into bowl, when the ball doesn't swing, they have the other options as well that they go back to and they'll think, okay, let me try plan B, plan C. And they're still very effective and attacking. And I think that's where these Pakistan bowlers will learn a lot. They'll learn a lot from this tour. Um, and Azhar Ali will learn a lot about his captaincy as well. Um, so, you know, we can't just, you know, be so harsh with this Pakistan team. They are still a young team. They were, you know, the conditions did favour them. They, they did really well. But when it didn't and the wicket got flat, I think they just lacked options. Um, losing control from situations where they've had control, we've seen that twice now within the series. I mean, we saw that in the first test um, in Manchester when Pakistan was uh, pretty much uh, in, in the driver's seat. And then um, now, you know, England were four down and, you know, you were looking at uh, really getting one more wicket to get, get to the tail. What do you attribute that to? I think I attribute it to um, the lack of awareness to sum up the conditions. You know, I think it's very sort of, one size fit, fits all kind of method. Oh, we're in England. They've been, you know, it, th th this is a difficulty, right? Is that in the first, second test match, Azhar Ali just saw the ball swung a lot. And especially in that, you know, that second test match where they bought the ball swung and, and they got themselves back in the game. So under yeah. these conditions, you know, Pakistan do very well. Now, today was one of them sort of days where, um, you know, the ball didn't, didn't swing as much. You know, conditions, conditions did change. There was a bit more sun after lunch and tea and, 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 and the ball wasn't doing as much as, it, as they want it to do. So then, if I was captain of Pakistan, what would I do? You know, what do I do now? And if he's unsure, just get off, you know, go for a drink break, speak to Ms. Bar, speak to Mushibai. They know these conditions very, very well and they would know what to do. But 
it's a difficult situation because they've got to let the captain grow and make his own decisions. He's at the end of the day, he's accountable. He's responsible for the team, not the coaching staff. The coaching staff are there as a resource and he does have world-class resources at the moment. He's very lucky and he should go and if he's unsure, he should really have a chat to them, you know, and say, look, I'm really unsure. I don't know how, how do I get a wicket from Jacina Freedy or, you know, from the other fast bowlers. Yasser Shah, you know, he's leaking a lot of runs. How do I get him to bowl defensively? You know, maybe change the field, have a few defensive men out, and, and, and he just, you know, looks to bowl his best ball, but have men out. But Yasser Shah was, was brought in in the 12th over of the day, um, um, Monty, and this pitch, when you look at it, um, and maybe compare it to the Old Trafford one, the Old Trafford one was definitely offering more turn than this one. Yeah, the Old Trafford did turn a lot more, but I guess um, it was the uh, inexperience of the top order. So from a tactical decision, I think it was the right thing to do with the new ball, get the, get the spinner on early, and it did work. They got Oli Pope out. So, you know, this top order is quite vulnerable against spin. That's why they got, you know, Yasser Shah uh, in there quite quickly. Um, but, you know, when conditions did favour the bowlers, and I think everything was going to plan with Pakistan, um, we just needed cloud clover all day. <laughs> That's what it was, <laughs> you know. And when you know, this is the one place in England when when the cloud just breaks up, there's a bit of sunshine. Conditions can change quite dramatically, and it mm. did. You know, tomorrow morning we could have cloud cover again. I bet when Pakistan, Pakistan comes into bat, then you'll have cloud cover back on again. <laughs> Yeah, and then, you know, with Pakistan, they may be on, you know, let's hope, you know, it doesn't happen with them. And that's the thing, you know, in England. Conditions can change very quickly. Tomorrow is a different ball game. Um, and uh, it's, it's very much, you know, I think for this call has been very much a great learning curve for Azhar Ali. You know, he's going to sit down and think, right, me as a captain, I was thinking of getting wickets, you know, edges, and, and with ball swinging, suddenly conditions changed. Now what do I do as a captain? I have to change my game plan. I have to think differently. Now, can you see that the demand that there is on him as a captain? And, and I think that's why Joe Root's job is a lot easier because he doesn't have to think like that. He's got already Stuart Broad and Jimmy Anderson saying, well, here's the ball. You go, and, you go and set the field. I'll just go to slip. That's it. Azhar Ali doesn't have that. It's a lot harder for Azhar Ali. You know, people need to appreciate this. It's much harder for him to captain the team than Joe Root has to. Um, he doesn't have, you know, the likes of, he has a very young team. And it's, 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 I think it will develop him into a much better captain because he will have to now, you know, think, right, how do I get these bowlers to get wickets when the conditions, you know, do change? What does Pakistan do tomorrow now? I mean, uh, is it a situation of... Uh... They're out of the game. Uh, England has batted them out of the game. Or what could they do uh, to bring themselves back in the game? Well, for them to come back in the game, if it's the same conditions as they are today, then they need to get their bowlers to bowl it slightly not so full. If, if they're going to bowl it full and the ball isn't swinging as much, then you need a couple of drive men there, you know, to block the batsman on the drive. Why didn't, why didn't Azarali do that? Why didn't he maybe take one of the slips out, put a drive man there, change, change, change the angles, maybe get the bowlers to bowl slightly slower and say, guys, we're going to bowl wicket to wicket and, and look to seam it and get, the, get them to drive. And you just never know, we may get a wicket. He really needs to be a bit more creative in his captaincy, which I felt lacked a little bit today. But then again, he's very young in his captaincy. And, and you know, as a young captain, you are going to make these errors, you know? Mm. So you expect that from Azhar Ali to make a few errors because he's still new, new in his captaincy. Mm. Um, I can't end the, today's show without talking about Zach Crawley because he was really the star of the show today. Um, for somebody to score uh, not only just uh, 100, but a big 100, uh, we talk about uh, players coming in and winning games for their teams. A big hundred is actually what you need to dominate in, in tests. And that's exactly what we saw from Zach Crowley today. Yeah, look, Zach Crowley got his first hundred and I'm sure, you know, the England team were really relieved of that because 
they've always had a question mark over the youngsters coming through. Are they, you know, are they really good enough for test cricket? How long would it take for them to adapt to international cricket? And for them, it must be a huge relief to think, yeah, we finally now get in some youngsters, likes of Ollie Pope, who's, a, who's another fine, Zach Crawley, hopefully, is another one. You know, Dominic Sibley, who's found his feet, I think, at test cricket. So they've got, you know, a few of these youngsters coming through. Rory Burns, you know, he's just obviously struggling at the moment, but, you know, he's, he, he scored a few hundreds as well. And I think the final piece to their sort of, you know, young batters coming through is probably, you know, Zach Crawley. And, and he's shown that, you know, when the wicket's flat and, it's, and, 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 and the ball doesn't do much, he puts the bad ball away. You know, he doesn't just look to sort of, you know, bat long hundreds like Dominic Sibley would, you know. So Mike Atherton, he would love Dominic Sibley hundreds, you know, 300 ball sort of hundreds. But Zach Crawley is more of a uh, Joe Root mould, you know. Once he's in, he, he attacks. Is that, is that the need of the hour? Is that something that, you know, Pakistan should take confidence from just by looking at his innings because often too, uh, you know, we've seen uh, too often from, from the Pakistan players that they're criticised for the rate at which they're scoring. But then there's obviously that debate um, which goes around in test cricket that, you know, a real grind is what gets you the runs. But then you've seen, you also have a Joe Root, you also have a Babar Azam, you've also seen somebody like Zach Crawley. I mean, it's, it's interesting when you look at both perspectives of how to score runs in, in England? Yeah, look, if conditions favour Pakistan when they come out to bat, you know, the ball isn't doing much and the sun is out, we need the sun out and there's no, you know, not much cloud cover, then I think we'll see Pakistan, you know, bat in a similar mould as well. And I think I would love to see Balmer Azam score 100 because I think his 100 will be much more watchable. You know, he picks the length up so quickly. You, you, already, you already feel like he's already in position and the ball hasn't even arrived. And he, yeah, I think watching a Barber Azam 100 will be, uh, will be a, 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 a very sort of, I think for all the cricket fans and the cricket enthusiasts out there, they would absolutely love to see a Barber Azam, you know, scoring 100 in English conditions. I think that's something that we, we would all we love to see. It might require a double from Barber the way things are going. 100 might not cut it. Yeah, look, if, if, if Barber does score a double hundred, it would be, uh, uh, I think we both agree, it would be uh, one of the most watchable innings because he, he looks, you know, very favourable uh, on the eye when he comes out to bat. He just, you know, gets into easy positions and, and he makes, it looks back, makes batting look very, very easy. And I, I, I think I would love to see, you know, him score um, runs, but, you know, like he scores them, you know. It's not a grind. It's just, you know, flourish of runs, you know, lovely shot through cover, that beautiful flick that he has off, off middle stump, you know. Um, I, yeah, I think uh, we, we would like to see, you know, Pakistan, you know, score similar runs like uh, England did um, because it's always nice to see, you know, Pakistan talent, the way they score runs. They, I think they're very talented batsmen when the ball isn't doing much. Um, so... That's what we can hope for. You know, we need similar conditions um, when Pakistan come out to bat. Then we will see the Pakistan talent as well. Okay, Monty, uh, I'm going to leave it uh, at that. Uh, thank you so much uh, for your thoughts. And yeah, let's hope that um, we get a good game tomorrow. Uh, the weather's been kind to us today. So at least we got some cricket. That's been an issue in the previous uh, test match. Uh, but yeah, I think... Uh, it's an opportunity for England to really bat Pakistan out of the game and an opportunity for Pakistan to come back into the game by taking a few uh, quick wickets uh, in the morning. So, uh, kudos to England for the way they played, uh, but we've still got uh, time in this test match. So, you know, I'll be seeing you guys tomorrow.